Members of the City Council, the audience, please rise.
not particularly pleased to be here this morning. As a matter of fact, happy to be anywhere at my age. There are a lot of, <laughs> are a lot of people. But uh, I have the privilege, as the alderman said, to swear in my young friend some five years ago. There's not too much that Jeff can do that sends anybody away happy. But one of the things that I, two of the things I enjoy doing is swearing in new citizens. And every time I do, I bring my dad's citizenship. 1994, uh, and uh, then swearing in young lawyers, and then doing what I'm doing today, especially uh, especially for me. Glad you asked about that. It's been a platform for me many times to reinvest in new citizens and to do this the way that it's got me on. North Dearborn for the North Loop Light Commercial District for the use of Quick Take Authority. We stand by consideration if this ordinance will be appreciated. Thanks for the early sign. Mr. Van Bailey, Mayor. Come in, housing. Ladies and gentlemen, question of consent on buildings. I transmit herewith an ordinance amending section 13-32-320 of the Municipal Code to establish permit fees for antenna towers. We stand by consideration this ordinance will be appreciated. Thanks for the early sign. Mr. Van Bailey, Mayor. Come in, building. Ladies and gentlemen, next is the Commission of Housing. I transmit herewith an ordinance amending the enabling ordinance for the new Homes for Chicago program to allow for masonry construction and to recreate 13-172 and 13-200 of the Municipal Code of Chicago to make various changes related to daycare centers. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Thanks for the early sign. Mr. Van Bailey, Mayor. Come in, build it. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, question of the Commission of Housing. I transmit herewith an ordinance authorizing the execution of grant agreements for the funding of operating expenses of community housing development organizations. We stand by consideration of this ordinance. It will be appreciated. Thanks for the early sign. Mr. Van Bailey, Mayor. Come in, housing. Ladies and gentlemen, question of the Commission of Housing and the Commissioner of Planning and Development. I transmit herewith an ordinance appropriating $1,174,000 from Fund 925 grant funds and authorizing execution of a grant agreement with the University of Illinois at Chicago relating to the development of affordable housing in the Pilsen and Near West Side communities. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Thank you for the early sign. Mr. Van Bailey, Mayor. Come in, housing. Ladies and gentlemen, question of the Bub Public Building Commissioner. I transmit herewith an ordinance amending site designations for Chicago Board of Education projects as part of the 1990 Capital Improvement Program. The favorable consideration of this ordinance will be appreciated. Thank you for the early sign. Mr. Van Bailey, Mayor. Come in, housing. 
ladies and gentlemen, Chris Patricia is speaking for the person who has been here with an ordinance amending section 4-8-100 of the Municipal Code of Chicago regarding sanitation measures at outdoor eating establishments. Is there a motion to raise this ordinance? It will be appreciated. Very truly yours, signed, Mr. Lynn Bailey, Mayor, Penn License. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris is the Director of Revenue, a transmit here with an ordinance amending various provisions of Title IX of the Municipal Code of Chicago to expand the administrative adjudication program to include vehicle equipment violations. Is there a motion to raise this ordinance? will be appreciated. Very truly yours, signed, Mr. Lynn Bailey, Mayor, Penal Budget. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Patricia of Housing, a transmit here with an ordinance authorizing the conveyance of 1501 East 69th Street to the Dean Ministries Incorporated and authorizing execution of a redevelopment agreement. Is there a motion to raise this ordinance? will be appreciated. Very truly yours, signed, Mr. Lynn Bailey, Mayor, Penal Housing. Ladies and gentlemen, request the Commission of Planning and Development, a transmit here with an ordinance authorizing a CD float loan in a principal sum not to exceed $2,200,000 to Universal Scrap Metals Incorporated to assist in the expansion of that company's business. Is there a will consideration this ordinance? Will be appreciated. Very truly yours, signed, Mr. Lynn Bailey, Mayor, PN Finance. Ladies and gentlemen, request the Commission of Housing, a transmit here with an ordinance authorizing a loan in the amount of $1,898,454. Is there a will consideration this ordinance? Will be appreciated. Very truly yours, signed. Richard M. Bailey, Mayor, PN Finance. City Clerk transmits various miscellaneous communications and reports requiring council action. Approval of certain proposals by the Chicago Planning Commission and Department of Planning and Development placed on file. Also notification of sales certificate, trust indenture, note purchase agreement, and official statement authorizing issuance of City of Chicago General Obligation Tender Note Series 1990 on file. <laughs> notification as to the designation of Mr. Tariq Malhan to as proxy to the signature of the city controller to various documents placed on file. By statute, to be published in book or pamphlet form, were published in pamphlet form on March 6, 1996, by being printed in full text and printed pamphlet copies of the general proceedings. City clerk also transmits the following miscellaneous communications and reports requiring council action. The zoning request for cases of particular areas referred to the Committee on Zoning. Claims against the City of Chicago referred to the Committee on Finance. Also, a communication from Mr. Donald Neely proposing the decriminalization of for possession of small quantities of marijuana by imposing a schools are attending council meetings from the 20th Ward, the Witt Middle School, the Schmidt Elementary School from the 8th Ward, and St. Gertrude Campus from the 40th Ward. Will they all please stand up and let's give them a round of applause. Suarez has a request to suspend the rules for immediate consideration of a matter that I believe he submitted to the clerk. I have a copy here, Mr. Clerk. Hearing no objections, so ordered. Alderman Suarez. Can the clerk read the resolution, please? Whereas for 37 years, it prohibits countries from firing upon civilian aircraft. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the mayor and members of the city council of the city of Chicago, gathered here the 6th day of March, 1996, we hereby memorialize the Illinois Congressional Delegation to support President Bill Clinton's new restrictions on foreign investment and trade involving Cuba, on limited charter flights to Cuba, and on limited travel by Cuban diplomats in the United States. And be it further resolved that we urge the President and the Illinois Congressional Delegation to further tighten the trade and will copy this resolution be prepared and presented to President Clinton and to the members of the Illinois Congressional Delegation. The Chair recognizes Alderman Suarez. Mr. President, members of the City Council, this resolution speaks for itself. We're asking, first of all, the residents of the city of Chicago at, at, at uh, request of the representatives and our elected officials in Congress to please have heard that we cannot tolerate the abusement of, Mr. of Fidel Castro and the action he did 12 days ago. And we have to show also our brothers and sisters of the Cuban community that we are with them and that we're going to make sure that Fidel Castro Whereas recent newspaper columns which concerned Mexico and its people shocked and angered many readers and prompted a protest attended by more than 1,000 people, including elected officials and community leaders. And whereas commentary which targets specific ethnic groups threatens to undermine the contributions that such groups have made to the community, now therefore be it resolved that we, the mayor and members of the city council of the city of Chicago, assembled the 6th day of March, 1996, do hereby expressly recognize the contributions that persons of Mexican birth and ancestry have made to the city of Chicago. And be it further resolved that we, the mayor, and members of the city council. Place, a lot of things going on. This is an issue that has been very controversial. People in this, in this city and all throughout the country have been complaining about a couple of articles that have been in the Tribune. 
I believe in the First Amendment right. I also believe that we have to recognize the contributions that the Mexican Americans. Okay, Alderman Burke, Mr. Finance President, Committee. With respect to the uh, resolution offered by uh, Alderman Granada, I'd like to uh, join uh, with him in urging the adoption. And I do so with um, a certain uh, sense of historical irony because the uh, comments that have so enraged the Hispanic community of uh, Chicago, which appeared in the Tribune in just this uh, last few weeks, reminds me of uh, what the Tribune had to say about the Irish over 100 years ago. In fact, the Tribune, in its editorial comment, was rather blunt in its criticism of the Irish over the years. Mr. President, would you ask the council to come to order? Council, very, please uh, come to order. It's disturbing to have somebody trying to conduct a conversation right behind me when I I'm would hope to that speak. the members would respect uh, uh, Alderman Burke when he has the floor as well as anyone else. Your Honor, um, thank you. Over a hundred years ago, this is what the Tribune had to say about the Irish. Why do our police reports average two representatives from Aaron to everyone from almost any other inhabitable land? Why are the instigators and ringleaders of our riots and tumults in nine cases out of ten Irishmen? Who does not know that the most depraved, debased, worthless and irredeemable drunkards and sots which curse the community are Irish Catholics. Who does not know that five-eighths of the cases brought up every day before the mayor for drunkenness and consequent crime are Catholics? And even after the contributions of the Chicago Irish in the Civil War, the Tribune went on to say, the majority of the Irish present, true to the lower orders of these people, filled themselves early in the day with whiskey. And many of them consequently became mellifluously stupid or uproariously drunk. Well, Mr. President, that was mild compared to what the Chicago Evening Post had to say about the Irish Catholics. That paper went on to remind the populace of Chicago, and I quote, the Irish fill our prisons, our reform schools, our hospitals, and our reformatory institutions. Scratch a convict or a pauper, and the chances are that you tickle the skin of an Irish Catholic at the same time. An Irish Catholic made a criminal or a pauper by the priest and politician who have deceived him and kept him in ignorance. In a word, a savage as he was born. Well, Mr. President, well over a hundred years has elapsed since the local newspapers of Chicago made these remarks about a minority group in this city. And I can understand the outrage that's expressed by the members of the Hispanic community. But I think there is a certain historical irony, is there not? As much as things change, they remain the same. And just as those biases and prejudices existed in Chicago against the Irish immigrants who came here to dig the ditches and build the Illinois Michigan Canal, those Irish that went on to fought fight and die in the Civil War under the colors of the Union. Uh, today, in the 1990s, there still obviously is that uh, bias that exists against other immigrant groups. And so I think wherever bias or prejudice uh, or hatred uh, rears its ugly head, uh, I think it's appropriate for all of us who do have those immigrant roots and who all come from some minority one way or another to join together in solidarity and uh, support the outrage that's been expressed 
by our uh, brothers and sisters in the uh, Hispanic community. So I'm pleased to join with Alderman Granada in uh, urging adoption of this resolution. Chair, recognize Alderman Pardewinkle. I'd also like to join with my uh, colleagues in this resolution. I'm, I'm always grateful to my colleague, Alderman Burke. Uh, Alderman Shaw at Alderman Banks' uh, uh, microphone. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, <Charging him rent>. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, President, members of the City Council, certainly I want people can go to church and the children can play and so forth in our city. And most of all, people can work at their different professions without uh, being denigrated by uh, some paper or individuals for that matter. And hopefully this resolution will go a long ways towards solving that problem. And I hope that, and I hope the papers and the media take notice of this particular resolution today. Thank you. Point well taken. Chair, can I zone Jones? Mr. President, members of the city council, it's very interesting listening has to realize how important it is that this is a very common problem. So I, very, I feel very upset about some of the articles they write to divide our community. I think our community needs to focus, and the media needs to focus, on the positive aspects of what every elected official is bringing to their constituents. The first time uh, I rise to speak in the city council, I've often found it a practice not to stand up and speak just to hear myself talk. Uh, however, this time I have to stand up and urge all the members of the City Council to support, to join and support our colleagues in this resolution. I rise to thank Mike Royko for his comments. We all knew of the potential of the Hispanic community in the City of Chicago, but we, we wondered what was it going to take, what was it going to take to unify and act as a catalyst act in you well, in Chicago thanks to Mike Royko he's brought the Hispanic community together and although the brunt of his column fell on the Mexican American community it affects the entire Hispanic community we like you thank you very much Alderman Ocasio thank you uh, I rise to support my colleague uh, Alderman Granado for introducing this um, comes at a very good time because it comes at a time where people have been trying to divide up our community, where people have been putting Mexicans against Puerto Ricans, Puerto Ricans against Cubans, against South Americans, and many of you in your articles have done those, and the more than 1,000 people out there. And I saw people who came together, and they came together because someone like Miguel, and I'm gonna call him Miguel Royco, Miguel Royco, who, uh, Miguel, Someone like Miguel who, like Alderman Frias said, helped unite our community. Because for the first time we saw Cubans and Mexicans and Puerto Ricans and South Americans and Central Americans come out there to support each other. And that's important because it comes at the wrong time. It comes at a time when people are believing in Proposition 187. It comes at a time when people are believing in this whole anti-immigrant movement it comes at a time where people like Newt Gingrich and Buchanan can talk about the Mexican community and get away with it. And so all it does is that it feeds the fire. There was over 3,000 people over there. And like Goleman Fria stated, it started, it's a catalyst to unite us and to show them that we're here, read the history of what we've done for this country, and what we'll continue to do. Goleman Granado, thank you, and I join your resolution. Solis. I'm a little nervous. This is the first resolution uh, I get to support, and I think it's, uh, it's very symbolic that I do this. First question I was asked, one of the first questions I was asked by the press when um, you uh, announced my appointment was, what did I think about Mike Royko? Well, Mike Royko uh, has been lost it. Um, uh, and today I feel uh, very good because uh, my colleagues here, uh, women, Hispanics, African Americans, white ethnic Americans, as my Alderman Ed Burke here represents, are standing up and saying, you know, Mike, uh, you've, you've gone too far. 
And I think he needs to hear that because from the responses that he's given so far, it seems like he hasn't heard. So Mr. Royko, the, the Chicago City Council is sending you a message. Please respond. Thank you. Hearing no objection, honored. Finance Committee, Chair recognizes Owen Berg, Finance. Es verdad, nosotros no queremos, Senor Miguel. Owen Berg, we need an interpreter on that, please. <laughs> you violated the law there. <laughs> Your Honor, reporting for the Committee on Finance, yeah. item number one on the agenda is a resolution approving uh, Class 6B classifications for certain property located at 4650 South Racine Avenue in the uh, uh, stockyards development. Uh, the property is owned by uh, Unichema in North America, and uh, the uh, facility be uh, used to manufacture hydrogenated tallow and coconut uh, fatty acids. Unless there's objection to move to concur in the recommendation by roll call vote. Clerk, call the roll. Granado. Hathcock. Tillman. Preckwinkle. Holt. Steele, Beavers, Aye. Dixon, Aye. Shaw, Aye. Buchanan, Aye. Hules, Aye. Frias, Aye. Olivo, Aye. Burke, Aye. Jones, Aye. Coleman, Aye. Streeter, Aye. Murphy, Aye. Rugai, Aye. Troutman, Aye. Evans, Aye. Munoz, Zaleski. Say no. Motion is lost. <coughs> Alden Burke. Your Honor, item number two on the agenda is the approval of a Class 6B tax incentive classification for certain property located in the 31st Ward at 2140 through 2146 North Pulaski. This uh, Honor, item number 3,000 square foot rail serve distribution and manufacturing facility. The facility will be developed for use by the Southern Pacific Railroad for distribution and manufacturing needs. Uh, again, this is a, an exciting prospect uh, on the southwest side. Uh, where a uh, fallow uh, site.
But if you can just, what I'm going to ask you, tell me when you're ready to speak. Okay, just tell us, you know, wh you know what's, what's happened, what's going on here? Uh, I've just been um, confirmed by the city council after the mayor appointed me last week uh, to fill the vacancy of Alderman Ambrosio Medrano on the 25th. Uh, I, it was a very special occasion for me primarily because I had Judge Abraham Lincoln Maravich, who's over 90 years old, his parents were immigrants, but more importantly, he has sworn in over 10,000 of the people that I have assisted in becoming citizens. So it was a very special situation for me. What, and what happened? So we got to go back because we, we missed the last year here. Okay. So tell, what happened in the district? Alderman uh, Ambrosio Medrano resigned. He resigned because he was caught in a um, uh, illegally accepting money uh, from a uh, some agent from the government, and uh, he resigned soonly after it was uh, made public. And uh, the mayor took about a month and a half uh, to make uh, a decision as to who he was going to appoint. We talked a few times, and after um, some time of de deliberation, he, he, uh, he picked me. And so I'm happy with this, and I hope this is the start of my uh, service in government, which I really had not done and had not expected before. Did you talk to uh, Alderman Medrano since his yes. he resigned? Yes, yes. What's his mood, and what's, what's he feeling, and what are you guys talking about? Uh, he, he's up and down, but I think he's resigned to the fact that uh, he did. Uh, he, he admitted it. Uh, he's uh, ready to go and, and pay for what his mistake was, and uh, he expects to go to jail. He hopes that it won't be that long, and then he hopes to come back and make restitution, make some amends. What do you think of the fact that he got caught in this thing? Everybody likes him personally, but does that have any implications beyond his personal his personal story that he, he was the one that got caught? Yeah, to me it means that uh, you've got to be careful, that it doesn't matter if you're a nice guy, you're supposed to do the right thing. And uh, I've been told by my wife, I've been told by my mom, I've been told by the mayor, I've been told by friends, don't accept any envelopes and do the right thing, and that's what I'm about to do. Okay, what about for, for the, the Latino Daily Coalition that we interviewed about last year? The Medrano situation? It's stronger than ever. Uh, if you look at the, uh, at the support that the mayor has in the Latino community, it's over 80 percent. And I think that um, I am going to contribute to that, and I'm going to contribute to that not just because I support him, I support what he does as far as Latinos are concerned. His appointments of Hispanics, his uh, support of issues that are important to Hispanics have always been uh, 100 percent, and I think that he's been a good mayor. If you compare him to other big city mayors, whether in New York or in California, you'll see what I'm talking about. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Danny Solis. I'm alderman of the 25th Ward in Chicago, and vote for me. All right. All right. Hi, I'm Danny Solis. I'm the alderman of the 25th Ward of Chicago, and vote for me. All right. Hi, I'm Danny Solis. Sorry. All right, okay, okay, okay. Hi, I'm Danny Solis. I'm alderman of the 25th Ward. Vote for me. All right. Hi, I'm Danny Solis. I'm alderman of the 25th Ward in the city of Chicago. Vote for me. Pause. Pause after... Okay. Hi, I'm Danny Solis, Alderman of the 25th Ward in the City of Chicago. Vote for me. All right. Okay.
what, what group are you with? Public TV. Public TV? Yeah, we're doing a series of calls tomorrow. Oh, okay. I said because we did see your markings and everyone yeah, yeah. was Oh, no, we know. Yeah. No, you get, you get, I, I've been here before, you get the looks, okay, you know, it's yeah. like, because everybody knows hey, everybody. Well, yeah. Everywhere you go, I'm sure it happens, you know, and that's all. able to arrange for his wife to get some kind of a high appointment. I would take umbrage at that. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, this is the real world and people know one another. And I wonder if uh, Alderman Moore's wife was sitting around in the White House when Harold Icke, who I guess is a friend of Hillary's, was there deciding who was going to get the contract to run the travel office. I don't uh, hear the distinguished gentleman from the 49th Ward bringing that item up, but the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, there's not a question about showboating. We already took care of the showboat. They're coming with in town next week. They're coming into town. <laughs> <laughs> if there are these questions, those hard, those tough, hard questions, when he had an opportunity at the committee hearing, that's where they should have been uh, brought out, they weren't, and so my suggestion, with all due respect, Your Honor, is that those kinds of suggestions are simply speculation. There's nothing in the record to reveal that that's the case. There's nothing in the record to reveal that competitive bidding would have gotten better vendors, period. Okay. If he had a better way, like GM, where the objections should have been raised if they were to be raised, the matter's really? before us yeah. now, I move that the Excuse me, I defer to the Chairman of the Aviation Committee. Yeah, Every member of the committee. Yeah, Holt. Steele. Beavers. Dixon. Shaw. Buchanan. Hules. Friach. Munoz. Zaleski. Chandler. Solis. Ocasio. Burnett. Ed Smith. Burrell. Wojciech, Suarez, Sabinski, Mel, Austin, Cologne, Banks, Giles, Allen, Marino, O'Connor, Doherty, Vicaris, Alderman Munoz votes no, Alderman Zabinski votes aye, Alderman Schulter votes aye, all in Preckwinkle votes no. There are 42 uh, yeas, five nays, ordinance is passed. Motion to reconsider by Alderman Beavers. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. Motion is lost. Alderman Beavers. Thank you, Mr. President. Reporting for the com Committee on Police and Fire. Committee meeting held. Okay. No objections to order. Item number eight, an ordinance authorizing the transfer of funds within the City Council Committee on License and Consu Consumer Protection. Same motion if there's no Hearing objection. no objections to order. Uh, Mr. President, items number nine through 21 are 13 orders authorizing the installation of water mains. Same motion if there's no Hearing objection. Hearing no objections to order. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Chair, recognize all members. Before your uh, city. Right. Anyway, it don't matter. Is there anything wrong with it? I was going to say, 
Tell you, I, uh, first of all, I'm Alderman Billy Ocasio of the 26th Ward, and let me tell you about Chicago politics. It's fun. Uh, it's a lot of hard work. I think we take our politics very seriously here in Chicago, and we all believe in, you know, in doing the best for the city. And I think that people know that when you talk about politics, it's Chicago. Chicago is the time to talk about politics. But we we admire our politics here. We get involved in our politics here, and people, everyone in Chicago, gets involved in some type of political discussion. Uh, I think that what, that what we do here is basically that there's a lot of fires, a lot of discussions. You'll hear city council and city council go out there and don't argue the different points. I, and I think it's important because everyone here wants their fair share. Everyone wants to make sure that the city is being fair to everybody. And so you'll have the minorities come forward and you'll have, you know, uh, the, woman, uh, the woman, the minorities, everybody come forward and say this is ours and claim their part. And I think that what makes Chicago interesting is that we have a lot of politicians who take it very seriously. The mayor of the city of Chicago has been mayor here for a while. Uh, his father was mayor before that, and I think that they really, they really know what politics is all about. And they've been very fair to everyone in the city of Chicago. Uh, mayor Daley is a very good mayor, and I think that he's someone that will continue to do very well in the future. The relationship between the mayor and the Latino community, let me tell you, I think it's very strong. The Latino community likes the mayor. Uh, the mayor has come out, and he's been, he's been a part of our community. He came out to my community, and he supported us in a lot of different projects. I think that before the mayor Daly was in office, our community waited 11 years to get a uh, vocational training center built. Mayor said, let's do it. Uh, our community waited eight years for a new library. Mayor Daly said, let's do it. Uh, we waited for a Latino museum. We finally got our Latino museum. And not only that, but if you look at, especially in the Puerto Rican community, we have the two world's largest flags. Uh, and there are two flags that are uh, the symbol, uh, it's basically the Puerto Rican flag. Uh, we have two gateways, they're the Puerto Rican flag. Each one of these flags weighs 56, uh, I'm sorry, 40 tons, and they're 50, 56 feet tall. Now, these two flags have formed a gateway. And in less than one year, from us putting up the two flags as gateways, we have opened up six new businesses along that strip, uh, all Puerto Rican-owned businesses. And uh, even Chicago Crane Magazine he wrote an article on it, and they received the um, uh, uh, Archi uh, American Ar Institute of Architecture Award. Yes. Well, the coalition for, for well, I should say the Latino community, has been very good to the mayor. The mayor has been very good to the Latino community. Uh, I mean, just look at what he's done in the communities and how he has supported us. I think that it speaks for itself, his record alone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, I, I don't like to look at it as a part of Chicago politics. I know that you know, there's always something that goes on uh, every 10 years or something, something may go on. Let me tell you, uh, I think Ambrosio Medrano is a very good guy. I, he was my friend. I, I don't agree with what he did. I think that that was wrong. I think it's wrong for the city of Chicago. I think it's wrong for our politics and, uh, and something that we wouldn't support. Uh, so I think he did the right thing in, in getting out of office and pleading guilty. I think he did the right thing. But uh, let me just say that I, I don't like to look at those sort of things because 
what it basically did to the Latino community is that it set us back five to ten years. Uh, you know, people were starting to trust the Latino community. People were, even our own people were starting to believe that politicians can make a difference. And it, it was wrong what happened. And I don't think it's a part of Chicago politics. Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Alderman Billy Ocasio of the 26th Ward, running for re-election. I just want to ask you, vote for me. Okay. Okay. All right. Hi, I'm Alderman Billy Ocasio of the 26th Ward, running for re-election. I'm asking you to vote for me. Sorry, I screwed that one up. <laughs> City of Chicago, I left out. All right. All right. All right. Great. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Hi, I'm Alderman Billy Ocasio, the 26th Ward of the City of Chicago, running for re-election. Vote for me. Okay. Hi, I'm Alderman Billy Ocasio, the 26th Ward of the City of Chicago, running for re-election. Vote for me. Go to Russia, go to Central America, Africa, Southeast Asia, any part of it. It's politics is the same. Nationally, internationally, it's all the same. There's no difference. So could you start that again by saying Chicago politics is uh, in terms of state of story? Yeah. yeah, I think Chicago politics reflects uh, the politics of the world uh, from every nation, ethnic group, racial group, religious group. And so it's kind of, it's not, uh, it's, little, it's, I think the Midwest, Chicago, uh, uh, is competitive, uh, more so maybe than the rest of the country. It has a lot of history about politics and government, so it kind of reflects the world. 
when people think of Chicago politics, I mean, they, they think of it as opposed to other cities. It's got a reputation. It's got something that you know represents a part of America which is distinct. What do you think that is? Why well, is it so distinct? Well, I think today in the city council, I mean, uh, we get things done. We move on and get things done. We make decisions, and uh, that's what th one thing we stood for. I mean, it, and that's why the energy of the city is changing. This is one of the last American cities surviving. I mean, it's improving uh, as every day and every week and every month to make an American city viable that has poor and rich is middle class. And, and the key is the schools, and the key is uh, administration willing to make decisions. One of the things that always characterized Chicago politics, politics uh, under your father, under you, and under some other mayors is coalition building. It, you know, one thing about uh, coalition building is not unique. If you don't have coalition building, you're not going to have a family. <laughs> so, uh, so it's coalition building is the essence of politics. Do you like, do you like, uh, do you like politics in Chicago? Well, I, sure. I mean, what's, there's politics is in everything. Polit look at the business you're in. You get more politics than supposedly in the political system. You know, the press is very, very political in regards to their version of things. You have the power of the press, you have the power of the pen, and so you, you have the enjoy, ultimate say. Do you enjoy the, the hurly burly that, you know? It's not hurly burly. It's, just, no, it's, not, it's not like what I think uh, what the press tries to pr portray it differently. Most of these men and women in the city council they represent their communities and do a lot of work in the, in the community, and it's not what kind of portray. We have good count, you know, meetings, and we just move on. Do you ever get tired of hearing yourself compared to your father? No. I'd rather be care compared to him than some other people. No, I think he's a great political leader, a great, uh, great mayor. And you can ask any uh, mayor, presidents, both Democrats and Republicans that he worked with. He has a lot of respect uh, by mayors. And now being a member of the, uh, uh, next year as a president uh, of the uh, mayor's conference, I mean, we have members that served with my father in the 70s. So and all the things that he got, his federal revenue sharing off of Nixon, things like that, that was, that was quite a uh, feat to do. And his belief about uh, urban American cities uh, it's coming true about uh, rebuilding cities in urban America. One more question. How are you different from him? Well, I think I'm different uh, in, in many ways. My father went through, I never went through the Depression. I never heard about the, the First World War uh, and the Depression and the Second World War and, and hearing what happened to the Holocaust and things like that. In Roosevelt, making a difference. Now, today, we don't have that. Uh, we have challenges. We don't have. Uh, the issues like that that our grandparents or parents ever went through. No one, very few people don't even know what the Depression was. Very few people don't even know what the Holocaust was, unfortunately. Very few people didn't even know what the uh, First World War was about. And so that was real difficult times. We have challenging times in American cities. We have all these federal social programs. We're trying to find out whether they can work. They never had those programs. And so I think we have challenging times that are, and we can, we should be able to overcome these uh, times and to move in the next century. The population's changed a lot since then, too, so you have a different kind of city to govern. Oh, the city, uh, every five years, city changes. I mean, that's, uh, uh, city changes rapidly. And that's what America, America changes, because uh, we have the largest uh, uh, naturalization program than any city or state in the country. And our new alderman, uh, Alman Solis has led the efforts of Europeans and African American Africans and Central and, and South America, Latin South America, Asians, island people. It's amazing. And so we have thousands coming on board to become new citizens, and we're very excited about it because the city was basically built by immigrants. Immigrants have built the city, have made the city's history. You said something Thank funny. You. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you said something funny inside. <laughs> 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 okay, my final word. Uh, you right. said something funny about people calling 911 and what they expect. What, that, that's sort of a basic statement of politics. No, everyone expects uh, uh, the mayor, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Many times solve their problems, and there's nothing wrong with reaching out to mayors. I mean, one thing we do, we're the closest uh, to the electorate, and all the mayors from large cities or smaller sized, medium sized cities in America. Uh, hear from their constituents, and that's part of democracy. There's nothing wrong with that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Give him some warning. Okay. So we can. No, we never actually got a moment with him. That would be nice for some meal. Okay, we'll stay right here. Okay. She may well have gone already.
Everybody in our film was in one shot. Tillman and Daly and you and Doherty. You know, they were like all there. This is very, it's a little odd because you guys have been existing. It's like Plato's Cave. We've been oh, right, at exactly. We're in the shadows, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I bet you got something this week. Yeah. Do you realize you've been mentioned by, by somebody on the city council or something like the last five meetings? Every single meeting? Yeah. 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 Excuse me, guys. Well, my name is uh, Dorothy Tillman. I'm Alderman of the Third Ward. I've been Alderman for 13 years. That's uh, community on the south side of the, of the city of Chicago, the Grand Boulevard community. Well, I look at it as being elected officials is really using it as a platform to make things better for my, my people and all people who are downtrodden. Coming from the Civil Rights Movement, always going to government for regress, dealing with things that was wrong, this is a whole other side. It gives me an opportunity to at least make things right for those who are in need to really use it as an opportunity to better things. Well, I think Chicago is probably one of the most uh, cities that have the most ethnicity. We have, in fact, you know, I'm from Montgomery. I came here in 65 with Dr. King. And before I, before I came to Chicago, I knew nothing about ethnic. You was either black or white. And when I got here, I found out about all the different ethnic groups, you know, and the Irish, the Polish, the black, the, the, um, the Lithuanians. I knew nothing about Lithuanians and those type of, it was black and white. So Chicago, German, is, is, is still a very ethnic community. Uh, but the majority, uh, we have uh, the majority of, of Chicago is, is black now. Uh, and between uh, black and brown, you make up a huge majority. But uh, so, but you still have your pocket of ethnicity and you still have uh, your Irish. But I think Chica Chicago, the Irish have always, even though they have a very small uh, number, uh, they have always dominated Chicago politics because maybe they're better organized or been into it longer. I don't know. I say Chicago politics, first of all, is, is uh, if you put the right person in place, it's fun because Chicago do have what you have call home rule. Uh, compared to most cities, a lot of cities have uh, strong mayor, weak council. In Chicago, you have strong council, weak mayor, allegedly. So most decisions are made at the local level. Even when you talk about Chicago from the state, we have home rule where we make our taxing bodies, we make our own laws. And then when you get to the ward level, I represent over 60,000 people. That's larger than some towns. And when you get to a ward level, you're responsible for zoning. And you, you have your ward superintendent for cleanup, your district commander, police commander, your human service. It's almost like a little city. And you have a lot of say so in terms of how that community is going to be, where the streets are going to go. Uh, where the sidewalks are gonna, what's gonna happen. And what happened in the black communities more than the other communities, what we have is that a lot of our communities have been neglected for so long that when those of us, like myself, get in office, we almost end up being social workers. We end up doing things that we don't have to necessarily do as aldermen, but we do it because there's so many needs in our community. I mean, someone might come, somebody come to my office and say, my, 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 my child needs some diapers, or somebody might say, uh, I have a, a problem with my rent. Uh, I have a, a, a so caseworker problem. Uh, I need my uh, caseworker taken. I need this. I need that. Social worker problems, child in jail. Just things that family, everyday problems, we deal with those things. And we don't deal with them, they get mad. And one thing about Chicago, Alderman, and I'm proud of being a part of this body, is that we are the first line of defense. And Alderman is always the first line of defense. Whenever there's a problem, call your Alderman. Everybody knows who the alderman is, and everybody knows the mayor. Nobody knows their state rep, their senator, their congressperson. Everybody say, call the alderman. If it's a government problem for the state level, call your alderman. If it's a federal problem, call your alderman. Never the congressperson, never the state rep, but your alderman. And Chicago aldermen are first line of defense, and I think we do, in spite of our diversities, and sometimes we fight on major issues, uh, we do a great job in terms of being there for our community. We work 24 hours, our farm rank 24 hours, if a building is on fire, farm ring. You, you, they look for you to be there, to see about putting this family up, to see about are the children okay, 
I mean, we're on call 24 hours. Our staff is the hardest working staff in government. They work as hard as we all do. So we work very hard for the first line of defense in government. Well, I don't know whether you call it graces. I think that um, the mayor, uh, the mayor really, we have a strong council, weak mayor. It's just that the mayor has a lot of people who votes with them. Uh, I don't think that you'd be in a good graces. I don't deal with none of the mayors. I think I've been able to get resources from both. I came under Harold Washington, under Harold Washington, uh, Mayor Sawyer, and the sitting mayor now, and we've never done, done anything with them in terms of graces. We've always demanded or uh, re requested uh, what was for our community. And under either one of these administrations have our community been like, and under Mayor Washington, whatever our community needed, we got. So are you, and under the present mayor, uh, we are there to serve our community. We make a request. The commissioners and all of them, they're there to serve us. They might be appointed by the mayor, but they're there to serve us. And I've never made a request from any commissioner or any member of the mayor's staff that they have not responded and they have nothing to do with good graces. I think sometimes we fight. You know, we don't always agree, we'll fight. Uh, but if it's right, we vote for it. If it's wrong, we vote against it. But we also demand and, and, and what our community is supposed to get. We're taxpayers. Uh, we're there to represent, and our community should be represented regardless of who's in there. And that's the way we deal with it. Well, I always like to tell people that. I think the, the beginning of Mayor Washington was, was Martin Luther King, Jr., I think when we came here in 65, we began to break through a lot of barriers and make people get a lot of strength where they can move and begin to do it. I think Harold Washington was almost like the culmination of Dr. King and to put Harold Washington in the first black mayor of the city of Chicago, not just a black mayor, but a mayor for the whole city, a mayor that was fair, a mayor who didn't mind being black at the same time understanding that you can be black and still be responsible for everybody. Uh, mayor Washington cared for the community. He pioneered a lot of programs. Uh, in our communities. In fact, before Mayor Washington, we didn't even know they had uh, weed cutters. We just simple things as cutting weeds off the vacant lots. Uh, we got in the streets. A lot of the city service went directly to the community under the late great Mayor Washington that the black community was never really used to. And now we're used to it and we expect it. Uh, Harold Washington did another thing is that he believed in link development. Even when he, when he dealt with big companies in terms of companies doing business with the city, they had to give to the neighborhood. He was a neighborhood person. And I must say that a lot of the mayor's programs now that the present mayor is using are a lot of the things that Harold Washington came up with. So how important, if you go to people on the street and you say, Harold Washington is the mayor, you always tell us how important was it? Well, it depends on the age group. He was very great for the black community, black uh, self-esteem. He was really great for the city because what people don't understand, Harold didn't just free up the black community. Harold freed up the Hispanic community. They might not even be here if it not been for Harold. He freed up women. Uh, Chicago was such a closed government. It wasn't just the black community locked out. A lot of other people were locked out. Harold opened up the doors for a lot of people to come into government. And it wasn't just black and brown, it was other people too. So Harold just kind of opened those doors and said, come on in, let's work this thing out. And if it was anybody who showed a, a rainbow of, of people involvement, it was the late, great Mayor Washington. He was a great mayor. I remember saying to him, uh, you know, why don't we get ours? What are we gonna do? Is anybody saying anything to Harold about do he said, no, everybody gets theirs. It's equally, it's fair. I'm the mayor of all the citizens of the city of Chicago, and he was a great mayor. So what rainbow colors do you have? Well, uh, we're here in city government. I don't know that we vote like that. Uh, a lot of our progressive people who are here are no longer here. Uh, one of them, as soon as Gutierrez uh, was um, uh, uh, alderman that I personally went over with a whole band of people on Harold Washington behalf, and literally, knocked on every single door in the black community to make a difference in that election. And he kind of, he, he, he could have played a leading role in keeping that coalition together, but he opted to break that. And it's unfortunate, uh, but I don't think we're together on the floor in terms of the coalition, but the coalition outside of this uh, body that have worked together over the years is still together. And that's unfortunate, but that's real. Well, I don't think you think of whether they go with Mayor Daley or Joe Blow. The question is, do they go for what's right, or do they just vote just to vote? And it's not the personality as much as it is. I mean, you don't vote against somebody just because they're a person. You vote against them because they're wrong. 
And I, I voted against Mayor Washington when he was here. So you can't deal with whether or not you're just voting against, for or against the mayor. You're voting on the issue. And if the issues are, are correct, they should vote with us. Um, one of the things I have found out um, as uh, coming from the Civil Rights Movement is a lot of the gains in terms of affirmative action, in terms of people being able to, to uh, black and brown be able to have the seat. That came from the struggle of the black community. And you would think that it's a natural for the Hispa Hispanic community to work closely with us because we fought. We fought on behalf of them, on behalf of blacks and women. So women and the down out and the Hispanics and, and blacks are a natural coalition. But somehow it, it always happened that uh, if, if it doesn't fit them, sometimes they'll change. But there is a body outside of this body that still works together. Well, it was a great loss. It was a great personal loss and it was a great loss. You know, I was at the hospital when Harold died, so you know, I will always remember that scene of, of just watching him work on him and uh, praying. And I always tell people that um, I've never asked God for anything that God didn't give me, with the exception I asked God to give me Harold back. And I felt he was gonna be all right, but he didn't come back. And I think it was a, it was a trauma to our community and it's a trauma that our community has not overcome yet. Uh, so even myself now, I'm still angry at the fact that he, he died, uh, that something happened to him, whatever happened, and I think the community was traumatized, and we still are traumatized. And I don't think we've overcome that traumatization as a, a black community and as a city, and I think it's, it's a grieving that we have not had a chance to, to deal with. It's a grieving we have, not, we have not had a chance to talk about. And I think the black community is gonna have to talk about the death of Harold Washington. And nobody has ever, ever, and that might be something to do, really sat and dealt with the feeling of what it felt like or how you feel and where do we go from here. That has never done, never been done. At least with Dr. King, um, he was like a father to me, and his assassination got me, uh, but we knew that we lived very dangerously. And I, I was hurt by his death, but Harold was just kind of like snatched away. And uh, it's something that the community has not dealt with, and I think. It's an after effect, and I think it needs to be dealt with. Today's politics, we were here during the mayoral election last year, and I'll tell you, we went through a number of rallies along the South Coast, and we were really, really taken aback by the rhetoric. Not that people were just uh, opposed to Mayor Gallagher, but the rhetoric was very, very, very strong. Can you explain what's going on politically in terms of the African American community during the last couple of five plus years? Because it's, you know, I don't think I've ever been around. 45th Michigan? Yeah. I missed it, but I can imagine that. Yeah. No, it was on Michigan. Mm -hmm. What was it ready? Which is very, very strong. Really? What did they say? I was kind of soil and the rhetoric that you have a lot of times with African American politicians. It's going to seem very personal. Well, I think it, it can't be personal. It's going to be, be, be factual. And one of the things that Dr. King, you see, that's there lies the balance in terms of working with Dr. King, is we were always told to deal with what the truth is. As a scientist, you got to always deal with the truth. Um, and that's what you do. Uh, you can't deal with just rhetoric. You got if it's wrong, it's wrong. And one thing uh, the mayor said about me in the last election was that uh, Tim and I might not always agree that she fight for her people. There's a mutual respect. You have a respect for the mayor. But you have, if you're wrong, I'm going to fight you. If you're right, I'm going to fight you. It's just like Trotman. She never, she didn't know what I was going to do. But it's like I felt it was very wrong. She's been passed over. Why are you going to pass her over? She said, this, this is not a Hispanic seat. She's the vice chairman two times, and she had not been given it. She's very good. And this person had a, they have a chairmanship. Uh, things, you know, things is right, you fight. Things is wrong, things is wrong, you fight. Things is right, there's no need to fight. Um, I know some of the rhetoric might have been strong. I think they should have stayed whatever. I think you always stay with the issues. I really think that we would have, too, we needed a, a, a black mayor, but not just a mayor because of the color, but because uh, the African-American community felt we would have fared better. It had to be a person with character, a person who was right. I mean, you can have somebody in there you, you know, you got to deal with content of character. I mean, if you get someone in and don't take care of our community, it's still the same. So what's the difference? Um, I don't know. I guess I don't know. Well, is it the case, then, that, that you have rhetoric in the middle of the campaign, but then afterwards it seems like everybody gets along pretty well over there? Um, well, you wasn't in the council. You was at a rally. Mm -hmm. And even now we disagree on something. 
Uh, one thing about Chicago government, even under Mayor Washington, in the height of the 29-21, the garbage got picked up, the lights got turned on, basic city services happened. The struggle was always with the contracts. That's a struggle. How many contracts are we getting? When you look at the fact that we don't have enough policemen, black policemen on the police force, the firemen, when you look at that, and when you look at contracts and things affecting the black and brown community and the women community, that's the fight. The other stuff is just basic city things. But it's contracts. It's about how much resources. And where does the resources go? Do you build enough black, give enough blacks contracts that they can build uh, and, and work? Because if, if, if a black get money, the money turns over in the community a certain amount of time. So I think that's the bigger fight in terms of equity with the contracts. And one of the things that Her Washington did is he did have equity with the contracts. And I think that's what people miss in the boat when they're just talking. I mean, we're going to sit here and have, we're going to take care of the city. That's our responsibility as, as elected officials. But it's all about the contracts. I mean, who, where do the contracts go? What does, does the money go uh, to building? I can certainly say that I probably got more housing redevelopment in my ward on, on the Mayor Washington, even though I do get some now. Uh, Harold coming from the black community and coming from also the machine, because he was nurtured in the machine. He understood the politics of it. He also understood the needs of our community. And he was able to balance it all to try to at least begin to help the community uh, grow. And also in Harold Washington, people felt a kinship, so they, they too became a partner. Under Harold Washington, black folks felt a partner in government. So that's what you had. Well, one of the things, I'm, you know I'm running for Congress. I do intend to win by the time it's here. But one of the things we have not done, and we have not in this election, put any posters up on the polls because I'm so disgusted. I've never in my life seen it, especially when you were in the center part of this district. That looks so messy. It should be neat. This is a battle of the signs, but that's part of Chicago politics. You should be neat. You should not. I've always told my workers that you are not to deface people's property, nor are you to put them on the public way in terms of traffic signals and be disrespectful. Some folks have no respect. You can't expect people to give something they don't have. Well, why do you think that there's so much battle? Because it's, it's, it's compared to any other city we've been in, the battle of the signs here is more than any place else. So what is it about Chicago? Well, name recognition. Uh, people sometimes uh, don't. They're standing by the bus post and they're looking. And there's a percentage of votes that you might get. Last minute, they might see your name, you know. But I, I tend to think people have, they believe people have not made their mind up before they went in. And, that's why you do it. You should be on election day with the palm card. You've seen that, the passing of, of the palm card. Well, I do a mailing. In my ward, I, on the election day, all of my, in my ward, all of my residents have my sample ballot. So how do you feel when you drive down the street and you see uh, the night after when the opposition crew ripped off and chased off all the folks that went to vote? It don't bother me. My workers get upset. It don't bother me. I mean, it's not, you know, they're not ripping my face. <laughs> I dare them. <laughs> Let me ask you to do one more thing. It's the last thing. We've been doing this all over the country. This is our 30th state, and we're trying to blot a shrine to this mild man that keeps looking in the camera. Hi, I'm Alderman Dorothy Tillman in the city of Chicago. I represent over 60,000 people, which is larger than most a lot of little towns. Right now, I'm running for Congress for the 7th Congressional District uh, in this country. I intend to win by the time this, by the time this show. Uh, welcome to Chicago. The greatest city in the world. Okay, can we do a short first? Okay, with adjustment. <laughs> 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 so it's consistent. Say what you mean, Paul. <laughs> you didn't like that? Well, I do like I do like that one. He's got to match. He's got to match. I've never known to match anybody. I've always <laughs> surpassed them. <laughs> I guarantee you'll stand out. Yeah. Um, but if you can do, um, I'm Alderman Dorothy Tillman, and I'm running for Congress in the city of Chicago. I'm and running and for Congress in the 7th Congressional District. In the city of Chicago, that's fine. I stand corrected. Okay. The honorable member of the third ward. 7th uh, Congressional. So just, you know, I'm all the uh, anyway. Dorothy Tillman running for Congress in this 7th Congressional District in the city of Chicago. Yes. Hi, I'm Alderman Dorothy Tillman. I'm running for Congress off of the 7th Congressional District in the city of Chicago, state of Illinois. Just try one more time. A little bit more energy. Hi, I'm Alderman Dorothy Tillman. Uh, I'm running for Congress in the city of Chicago. 
Hi. <laughs> Hi. I'm Alderman Dorothy Tillman. I'm running for Congress in the 7th Congressional District in the city of Chicago, the state of Illinois. Hi. I'm Alderman Dorothy Tillman. I'm running for Congress in the city of Chicago, 7th Congressional District, state of Illinois.